Well, hello there. Hello, Robert. See, I just want to start this Sunday off with just fun and positivity <laughs> and just enjoyable. You're such a brat. And for all y'all don't know, as I started off the podcast kind of goofy and Robert's like, nope, retake. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be very Walter Cronkite today. Do you know who that is? Uh, I'm a Comcast journalism major. I know exactly who Walter Cronkite is. I mean, I just didn't know if it was an age thing and I was trying to be polite and let you know who he was. So hello and welcome from the kitchen. We are now doing the podcast. He was actually one of my favorite journalists. He had a really cool voice. Yeah. And he was really like, he was very influential in a lot of like things. And one of my favorite classes in college was history of communications. Oh, cool. And it was, it was taught by a rather tenured professor who really didn't care whether or not like everybody learned. Mm -hmm. um, I got an, I got an A in the class just cause I like history and I liked communications and Walter Cronkite was one of my favorites to, to study about. Now, do you think back in when like um, broadcast was done, like the way he did it, mm -hmm. that there was more integrity in broadcasting than there is today? What do you mean integrity? Well, I mean, today it just kind of like, you have to almost take the news with a grain of salt. You almost have to figure out, I mean, is what they're reporting correct or are they politically backed or you know kind of like along those lines um well the problem with the media today and what was not the case back then with walter cronkite is there's just there's there's so much media to consume mm -hmm. and back then it was like oh well this is the status of the war or this is what's going on there and so it was very um narrow in terms yeah. of in terms of like opinion and and um, how you received that information. Whereas today you have, you know, 80 different media sources, you know, spinning a story in, into whatever political, mm -hmm. like, keep talking, um, direction that they want. And that's unfortunately, that's like the first rule of, um, journalism is to report on, to be report unbiased, you yeah. know, but unfortunately a lot of the journalists and a lot of media today just don't adhere to that rule. See, that's kind of what I was getting at because now it's almost like, um, it's like, um, sensual, uh, it, they, they like make it almost like a reality TV show. Well, it, it's ratings, it's yeah. ratings and money. And, yeah. and so I don't think it's any one person flipping any one switch, but I think they, they, they're there. It's a dying profession yeah. and they're going to have to do what they can to get the views. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that it's the way it is, but it is how it is. It's how the world works. I wonder if they're like, and, and then I'll, we can get on the subject, but okay. I just wonder if they're like for or against like the TikTok ban, because I know I personally find a lot of my news like on TikTok being mm -hmm. reported by other individuals mm -hmm. instead of going to the news where they're trying to get ratings. So I, I'm just kind of wondering if that's where it's like a dying source. No, I, I think, well, I, it's, you can't speak in like, it, it's such a broad answer. You know, it's got different opinions depending on who you ask. It's very loud. Yeah, I know. She's a quite the loud drinker. Uh, so I have been um, following like um, nightly news and, you know, just like mm -hmm. the news channels. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of cool because they kind of like condense their stories mm -hmm. into just like, here's what's happening. And, mm -hmm. and it's a little, for me, it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, you know, and that's what's kind of nice too about, you know, like you're talking about TikTok news. That's where a lot of people consume their their, mm -hmm. their media and they consume their, their world events. And again, you have to take that with a grain of salt because people, they die. I would say majority of the people don't have some sort of like journalistic background. So they might report unbiasedly or, or biasedly. They might report inaccurately. So there's nobody to like, there's no checks and balances. And so yeah. like in a newsroom, there is checks and balances, even though, it, you know, it could be biased. It could be politically motivated, but there is, uh, there is somebody like checking. And so I think, you know, I think you have to take your TikTok news with a grain of salt. But also too, like when Iran was um, like, killing all the young girls and stuff mm -hmm. or protesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't hear about that on the nightly news, but you could watch a TikTok and mm -hmm. people were like, Oh my gosh, they're killing us. It's Cause you foreign, know? foreign news isn't exciting for Americans. Yeah. But you, I got my, my information from mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. even then you still have to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's one thing that they, you know, I, the next book I'm reading is actually talking about like being more of a skeptic, you know, okay. don't, don't just adhere to like what anybody's telling you, you know, don't take anything at face value. Yeah, I don't think, I, I mean, personally, I don't think I'm super gullible. I mean, sometimes it's like, I really, um, when it comes to animals, I'm probably a little bit more gullible. You're very, you're susceptible. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the certain things, yes. And certain things, no. I mean, it's like, I don't think I'm quite as much of a pigeon as you think I am. Okay. So... Okay, let's get. <laughs> I'm just saying that every, know, everyone, everyone, 
you know, the wool can get pulled over everybody's eyes from time to time. I'm not saying that you're more gullible than other people, but yeah. I'm saying everyone should, you know, do their own research. Well, uh, yeah, because that's one thing I like to do. It's mm -hmm. like I know something's going on, but I like to read about it from multiple sources. Mm -hmm. I read my news more than I watch my news. Okay. So, yay. So welcome. It's a Sunday morning, and mm -hmm. we are full of just energizing energy. Mm -hmm. Indy is very curious about the world outside. Yeah, so this will be my week to talk. And, is that um, a nice way of telling me to well, be? Well, yeah, you're very descriptive. <laughs> like the sun is out, that plant is green, Indy's at the screen door. Um, <laughs> Pam's under the coffee Pam's table. Pam's under the coffee table. So I, I like, you know, I like okay. to, you Let's know, get I'm, in. Here to, I'm here to get to work. So my topic this week is something that I think, that I really didn't have a topic walking into the week. And to be honest with you, I thought it was your week. So I was like, oh, well, I don't need to research because it's mom's week. And I forgot that you had done last time. But mm -hmm. I, I figured... It really didn't come to me until yesterday when I had to, you know, apply like real adulting and it came to drawing clearer boundaries with certain individuals. And, and I think it was very interesting because I got a tarot card reading yesterday too. a viewer from my stream gave me a free tarot card reading and she only, or he only pulled two cards, right? But both were, both were really significant in different ways. One was, you know, how I'm perceived and the other one is talking about relationships and the first card was the emperor card. And it was said that people perceive me as like authoritarian or mm -hmm. some sort of a, a power. Um, I, I have some sort of like power dynamic and things like that. Like not so much in a negative way, but as a streamer, there's the streamer to the consumer kind of like um, dynamic. Mm -hmm. And a certain viewer had, in my way, felt that she had overstepped her boundaries in a lot of ways. She was very uh, uh, opinionated and she like was saying that I would like deliberately ignore her messages and that I don't like, and that like I should have more time to like respond. And I had, and, and I had to like set those boundaries that, Hey, this isn't, this isn't a 50, 50 relationship. Mm -hmm. This isn't a, you know, like a give and take, although I'm friendly, I'm not, you know, this isn't a friendship. And I had to set those boundaries and, and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't scared because I'm not, I wasn't afraid of what she might think. I wasn't afraid of like, oh, what if she says this or what if she says that? It was more of just like, oh, well, I need to establish these boundaries soon so this doesn't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And so although it was very uncomfortable, I would say, I would say it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable in the moment, but I think in the long run, it, you know, it, I felt better and this person knows kind of going forward what to expect. And so that this person's, you know, feelings aren't hurt because they'll just be like, oh, well, that's normal or, mm -hmm. or, or this is the this is the situation that it is so if he doesn't respond to me or if he doesn't acknowledge me i'm perfectly okay okay um so my topic this week would be talking about you know um what's it called uh how, five it says how to set boundaries five ways to draw the line politely okay so that'll be my topic this week and and i think a lot of people confuse setting boundaries with with confrontation mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people you know don't want to set those boundaries or are afraid to set boundaries because they're afraid of what the other person might do at the risk or at the downfall of their own personal health or their own self-esteem or whether it be anything like that so okay. that's that's my topic this cool. week yeah so it's from the science of people dot uh, com and the article starts off with, um, as Bernine Brown said, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. The more precise you can express your boundaries, the more likely your boundaries will be respected. While you may need to repeat yourself a few times, don't feel the need to apologize or explain your boundaries. And I'll, I'll draw a lot of examples from this interaction with that individual. So okay. when I was messaging this person, I started off with the sentence, I'm sorry if you feel that way. And then I deleted it and I did not apologize or say I'm sorry at any point during our messages because there wasn't anything for me to apologize for. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a very, it was a very defining moment yeah. because I would, before I'd be very people pleasing, like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't believe you felt like that. I'm, I'm, I was very apologetic. Whereas this one, I was like, you know, this is my comfort level and I don't want this, you know, this person's intruding and I have nothing to apologize for. It's not that I did anything that is like, you know, worthy of an apology. If I, right. if I had overstepped my bounds or if I had said something that was, you know, rude or, or condescending or they received it a certain way, I'm like, I would say, I'm sorry you felt that way or I'm right. sorry if it was interpreted, but I didn't do anything wrong. And I think that was a really good example that you don't have to apologize for setting a boundary. And I think that's a really cool that like in your own mm -hmm. personal journey, Robert, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was super big. And, and it, it definitely, 
resonated a lot. And mm-hmm. I actually like, I thought if like was in like a think tank with some friends in a voice chat, you know, as we were talking about it. And th- it's super interesting because I feel like in the streaming world, a lot of people feel like as a streamer, you like owe it to the viewer or the viewer has some sort of ownership of you because they are actively in your chat and it's not the same. It's, it's not the same power dynamic. Right. And I think this viewer confused that power dynamic and wanted more from me that I wasn't going to give. Well, that's very reminiscent of like when you started streaming. Yeah. When I started streaming, I was very people pleasing. Mm-hmm. I was very like, Oh my gosh, we're a community. We're friends. We're everything. You know, I live or breathe for you guys. If mm-hmm. you're not having a good day, I'm not having a good day. Whereas now it's like, Oh, well, sucks you know yeah. like I, I can't control you and I can't control how you feel um, I can only control the boundaries that I've set and how you can navigate that right um, so then the article continues with here's precisely how to set boundaries that protect your mental physical and emotional well-being from fostering healthy relationships at work at home and in social circles and it says healthy boundaries oh, wait I skipped a second this is like an invincible fence around the perimeter of a yard boundaries establish where your space ends and someone else's begins if a dog can recognize and respect the perimeter then so can everyone in their uh, in their life or in your life excuse me and so it's very like clear cut like I um you know like I everyone knows now that I, I go to bed at eight so everyone mm-hmm. knows that like hey like 8 30 Bert's gonna go to bed you know I, I have these boundaries that I have set for myself and people can adhere to it and you know, I think a lot, I think a lot of it too, maybe why I like, maybe why I brought this topic up is because I really like structure Mm -hmm. and setting these boundaries is, is very, um, structural. You know, there's a lot of structure to it because it's like, well, this is, this is my comfort zone Mm -hmm. or this is, and like, if you, if you, you know, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I don't like when people do. And so it's very structured and I, and it resonates really well with me. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I've been making little notes, okay. but do you think that, because for me, this is like all part of like a self-love journey mm-hmm. by part of having that self-love is you're putting up boundaries because it, it basically is part of your mental health. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. You yeah. know, you're like, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. This is me telling you no. Yeah. It's you getting past that whole people pleasing mm-hmm. thing, which went all the way back to your last topic of yeah. um, low, low self-esteem. self-esteem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing though, is like, yeah. And like you say, like, you know, you may not have high self-esteem, so you're not comfortable setting those boundaries yeah. or you're not comfortable telling somebody that you're uncomfortable with actions they've taken. And, and a lot of it, like you say, it comes back to low self-esteem. You're mm-hmm. not confident enough to make that distinction. You're not confident enough to, to love yourself enough to, to speak up. Yeah. And it's very hard. And I think a lot of people confuse, um, you know, setting boundaries with conflict, you know? Oh yeah. And I, and I think, um, and I think the more you kind of distinguish the two, they're completely different. You know, one, you're speaking up, you know, you're speaking up for yourself. The other one is like, you're, you're, you're the aggressor. Yeah. Because I think that people don't understand how to do it in mm-hmm. a very non-confrontational way. Yeah. So they get like all built up and then they're like, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah. And you know, and they're overthinking it. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, what if this person says this? What if this person says that? And so they have like this mental duel inside yeah. their head before they even set a boundary. And, and they just go in thinking that the other person is going mm-hmm. to be hostile. Mm-hmm. So they go in hostile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they go in hot and yeah. things like that. And if yeah. they were just like, Hey dude, I don't like that. Or yeah. like, you know, that's not cool. And they, they either people are going to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Or they're going to be like, well, I can't believe you think like that. And then it's more of a reflection on them than it is on you. Mm-hmm. If they don't respect the boundaries that you set, then they're obviously not the person who you think they are or, or they, they need to be um, looked at differently. Yeah. So th- that is more of a reflection. If they don't respect the boundaries you set, then it's more... Um, on them as a person than you as a, as a character. Yeah. So, yeah. So to continue, it says healthy boundaries are the limits you place around your, t- uh, around your time, emotions, body, and mental health to stay resilient, solid, and content with who you are. These empowering borders protect you from being used, drained, or manipulated by others. Mm-hmm. And it says you can set a boundaries around emotional energy, time, personal space, sexuality, morals and ethics, material possessions and finances, and then, and then in really big, bold things, it says social media, Okay. which I thought was very interesting. And it says boundaries can be set with friends, family, romantic relationships, coworkers, and strangers. And it says, though they aren't as blatantly clear as a fence, wall, or no trespassing sign, healthy, boundar- healthy boundaries communicate to others what you will and will not tolerate. In short, boundaries empower you to, tr- to take charge of your life. Mm-hmm. And so it's very cool. And then, you know, obviously, I think the one that will resonate the most is with social media. And right. then I would say also like time and, and emotional energy. But, you know, like in social media, it feels, uh, it's interesting how many content creators cave to the social pressures of what they think their fans want. Mm-hmm. And then they end up doing something that'll ultimately like be very 
super cringy, super cringy, yeah. and like a, a lot of times a downfall to their. Mm-hmm. It'll it'll kind of destroy their character. It'll destroy their perception or how people perceive them. And a lot of people are like, oh my god, like she either sold out or you know this person is you know just doing this for likes and mm-hmm. things like that. And so by not establishing that boundaries, it's it's really interesting to see how people can confuse the two. Yeah, because I think like that one person that's out there just chasing the views yeah. and the likes and everything mm-hmm. is. I mean, they're going to continue to have like zero boundaries. Yeah, you know? exactly. They're going to continue to push yeah. that envelope. Mm-hmm. Whereas you, you, you seem like you're building a really healthy environment, mm-hmm. like a really solid platform. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that you've mm-hmm. been able to just like establish that right. Totally. Well, it comes back to that people pleasing thing. Yeah. You're like, well, if I do this, people will like it. If people like watch it and like it, then that means uh, that I, uh, you know, I have like value. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, like don't value, they, they look, they look for, their value in other people where they're like, Oh, well, if this person, you know, if I have 10,000 followers, then obviously I'm worthy or I'm important or things like that. And I think people, you know, their, their, their perception of how they perceive themselves is really skewed. Yeah. You know? So let me ask you this. So, Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes you and I have a little bit, we communicate on different levels. We can I would say we communicate incredibly differently, incredibly different Mm -hmm. ways. Now, have you thought about like setting those clear cut boundaries with me? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, our communication is so different. Mm -hmm. I communicate one way and you perceive it another, and then I communicate one way and then I perceive you you communicate and I perceive Mm -hmm. it wrong. So have you thought about like how you can implement like these clear cut boundaries, like in our communication, like, Hey, I don't like it when you do that or, you it know. takes a little bit more time okay. I guess I think there's a little bit more like there's more residual trauma and there's a lot more like bad habits that have been forming. Yeah. Um, you know, through the, it's, you know, we're basically unworking a 30 year old knot. Exactly. And so for example, yesterday when you and I were talking, I, I, I didn't feel as validated or I, I didn't perceive how your conversation with me is, is like helpful. And I felt a little like, um, I would say irritated. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really think anything of it. And I was just kind of like, Oh, well, you know, you know kind of like wrote it off, but you were like, Hey, I'm so And then you apologize. You're yeah. like, Hey, I'm so sorry if I'd said anything that, you know, maybe you perceived differently or this wasn't my intentions. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's perfectly fine. Yeah. And, and like you say, I think you and I, we had the same conversation, but we want, we were looking for different outcomes. Yeah. And sometimes I really feel like sometimes we go into a conversation with almost like knives out. Like we go in guarded. I would say I go in guarded. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of times, honestly, if we're going to be completely honest. I think a lot of times, when we have, when I have a conversation, when I open up, sometimes I think it's easier if you're just like, mm-hmm, okay, yeah, instead of trying to like either find examples or find solutions and yeah. kind of things. And so, see, but the thing is, and if we're going to be completely honest, mm-hmm. in some cases we've been communi- you know, we've been talking, mm-hmm. and you've accused me of like um, almost like blowing it off or not mm-hmm. being, you, you know, like mm-hmm. understanding it. Mm-hmm. So. Where when I can, it's it's kind of funny because in my brain where I'm all like, you know, like it's almost like alarms go off. Mm-hmm. Like he's communicating yeah. and then I'm like, bat and ship. Okay, what do I do? Yeah. You know, do I just, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Running the risk of like you thinking like I'm just not mm-hmm. like actively listening to your yeah. conversation mm-hmm. or I try to engage and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know what? She's not listening because she's making it about herself. Yeah. So I'm kind of like in that, that mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, You're in a catch 22. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not for the lack of trying. And you know what? And this is by no means 100% any jab at you. No. Yeah. It's untying. We just that, communicate differently. Yeah, and, and like you say, that knot. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. untying that knot. So, mm-hmm. you know, part of the time it's like, it's like I roll the dice. I just don't, you know, mm-hmm. And, and I absolutely 100% listened to everything you said. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to, in my mind, communicate mm-hmm. and in communication would be like, oh, well, this or that, yeah. or, you, you know, almost like having it like your sentence lead to another sentence sure. kind of way. That's understandable. Yeah. You know, but, but to, to touch back on it, I do. Yeah. I do think there's boundaries with this because I generally don't talk about anything unless it's. Um, I generally like don't talk about the day to day and mm-hmm. until like we're on the walk, Yeah, you know, because you know, I'm busy, you're busy. And so that boundary of like, Hey, this is when, this is when we can t- kind of talk about things is generally like on the walk. And you know, like I respect your boundaries. You respect my boundaries. You know, I don't generally come out and bug you when you're doing your game show or your live show. I don't, you mm-hmm. don't come into me when I'm streaming, mm-hmm. you know, so the, ba- there are boundaries and I, I don't think they're like, as like, 
you know, just because they're not like, oh, these are like big picture boundaries. You, know, you and I do operate within boundaries of what we deem acceptable and unacceptable. Right. You know, if you were to barge in when I was streaming, that would be unacceptable. But you know that because right. we've established those already. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wouldn't be in the back of your TikTok kind of making pantomime faces because that's a boundary that that we both have established. Right. You know, we both value each other's time, which is one of the examples of boundaries and communication and things like that. Right. So. Right. Because part of, and what, what was leading up to mm -hmm. that was that, I mean, because you can put out a clear boundary. You can mm -hmm. be like, you know what? This is my comfort zone. This is not my comfort zone. And then there can be people out there who don't respect your boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. Who be like, Psh, nah, mm -hmm. you're, you're fine. I want to do this. And what I'm getting at is like, for one thing, I want you to know that I do respect mm -hmm. your communication, your yeah. boundaries and everything like that. Yeah. But you also too, I mean, there's like a fine line between like you and I just having two totally different mm -hmm. forms of communication yeah. and then somebody out there who's just not respecting you as a person totally. and crashing through those, those yeah, personal I think, boundaries. I think you could tell the maliciousness of it. Yeah. And I think also too, I mean, but sometimes like not, I, I, you know, they say ignorance is bliss, you know? So it's kind of, sometimes you're like, oh, well I, I, you know, I, I didn't mean to be mean, but, but that person perceived it, Oh and, yeah. you know? And so like a lot of times, you know, I think it takes a lot of like self reflection, reflection to be like, okay, well nobody can make me feel these things. And then if you're, if you're, if it upsets you and you're like, Hey, you know what, what you like you did like yesterday, you're like, Hey, I'm sorry if I upset you or like, Hey, yeah. you know, when you said this, it really hurt my feelings. And I think that in itself is another boundary because right. your, your emotion and your physical state is, is more important than anything. Yeah. You know? So if you can set those boundaries that like, Hey, when you said this, this hurt my feelings, you know, yeah, I, I don't appreciate you saying that. That's you setting another boundary. Yeah. You know, so you, it doesn't have to be like, this isn't like your first line of defense, but this is also like, hey, like from here on out, I, I don't want to be talked like that. Right. Or like from here on out, when, you know, this hurt my feelings. Just so you know, next time this, that hurt my feelings. Yeah. And you know, and to be perfectly honest, you didn't say anything that hurt my feelings. No, But no. I'm just letting them know yeah. part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that the communication didn't go, mm -hmm. um, it, it didn't end with warm, fuzzy yeah. feelings I, well, on both sides. Yeah, generally, oh, to be honest, I, honest I, sometimes when I talk to you, I do my, I do my guard up, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, cause they, cause like much like how you don't ever know, like the right or wrong thing. There's a lot of times where I'm like, well, is, you know, if I ask mom, am I, am I going to be, am I going to get the answer that's going to make me feel better or worse? So like, you know, you have this like, you know, hot and cold game or this yeah. right or wrong. I, I, I also have that same yeah. kind of, um, hesitation when it comes to asking. Yeah. Which is also why I generally do it when we're walking because we're, you know, we're both in a neutral state and we're both in a position where we are, um, a little more comfortable with talking. Yeah. So, yeah. And, the, and, the, and, the, and truthfully, I try to make the walks about you, mm -hmm. um, because typically we go after Indy, mm -hmm. um, goes for, you know, after we take Indy for a walk after you're done streaming. Yes. And I always try to just kind of make it like, Hey, you know, how was your stream? How are you? Yeah. yeah. How, how did everything go? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it just, I don't know, Robert. I mean, truthfully, it just, I guess it's going to take time and effort. And There's no, there, that's the thing. There's no miracle cure. Yeah. You know, if there was that none of these websites and books would matter. Yeah. They, nobody would write, nobody would write them because yeah. everyone figured it out. You See, know? because I will be completely honest with you. Um, I, again, have a tendency to be really kind of, and as horrible as it sounds, a little mm -hmm. hostile when it mm -hmm. comes to like our communication. Mm -hmm. So yesterday when I went to go pick up, you know, pick up the food and go run errands, mm -hmm. I, I had an actual conversation with myself about how I have to, you know, I have to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not my past trauma. Yeah. You are my son. Mm -hmm. And so once I actually put that into place, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I wasn't as receptive mm -hmm. because my first instinct, whenever I kind of get like my feelings hurt or mm -hmm. anything like that is to go to anger. Sure. So to me, it was like, yeah, no, you know what? You're the parent. It didn't go the way that it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. You just need to address that with Robert. Totally. And I think also too, I think if we're going to be, you know, if we're thinking back on it, I think sometimes when it's talking to you, it's a little bit more difficult because you're so in, you know, you're so in the, like the forefront of everything I do. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I was to talk, kind of talk to Brandon, Brandon's a little bit clue. I don't say clueless because the kid's not he's a little bit more disconnected. He's, yeah. He's a little bit more disconnected with how I operate what's going on. And so Brandon can kind of come into it with a little bit of a broader perspective and being like, Oh, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
And sometimes I think I use, I, I, I think I would appreciate more of like a sounding board than um, like a, oh, well, he's having this problem. This will be my solution or this is my scenario thing. And I know that you're, again, you're, you're mm-hmm. you know, you don't know which one is the right one. So maybe my boundary will be like, hey, mom, I'm just going to, I you know, like, hey, how's your day? We're like, well, can I vent to you for a second? And so when I'm like, when I vent to you, I just want, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And if I'm like, hey, mom, I have a problem, then I will want that that solution. I'd be like, hey, I could use your input on a solution. Yeah. So that's me making more of a boundary. And mm-hmm. be like, hey, you know, this is something I just want to get off my chest versus, hey, this is something that I could use your help with. And it's up to me to... Um it, it's up to me to listen to that and respect your boundary. Yeah. And if you're like, if I'm like, Hey, can I talk to you? Can, you know, can I get something off my chest? And you're like, well, you should just do this. I'm like, well, that's not, that's not what I need right now. Well, that's not venting. That's if you come to me and you're like, mm-hmm. Hey, can I ask your opinion mm-hmm. about something? Then I'll give you my opinion. Yes. If you're like, Hey, can I just vent to you? Then yeah. I just need to be that's quiet what I'm and saying. listen. I'm, but I'm saying that if you do the opposite, it's my, it's up to me to let you know that that's not what I need. Yeah. It's not your responsibility to you give me what I need without and making that boundary. Yeah. But it, and also too, and since we're so new at this communication mm-hmm. and new at these boundaries mm-hmm. by you going in and telling me what it is that you need, mm-hmm. whether it's an opinion or just a vent, it, that is up to me to respect that and to do. Sure. But also too, and let's just flip this around. Mm-hmm. Um, because do you, I'm getting ready for the next thing. Oh. Realize, okay, <laughs> we're okay. We're, yeah. I can, I can, I, can no, I was, ju- I was going to try to give you a moment. Okay. Continue. So no, guess what I was going to say then is because sometimes like on our walks, mm-hmm. I'll be like, Hey, can I talk to you about mm-hmm. something? Yeah. At that point, that's, I'm setting, you know, I, I'm basically at that point, if you're like, Hey, I don't really have it in me right mm-hmm. now. You know, it was a tough stream. Mm-hmm. Then that is, you know, that's my boundary and your boundary. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, yeah, go ahead. You know what? Then I would request the respect to actually engage and mm-hmm. listen, because sometimes I think you try to, to just be like, yeah, go ahead. And then you go to your happy sure, place. Yeah. In sometimes I definitely give you like the lip service. Mm-hmm. We're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which totally invalidates me, yeah. which really makes me feel like my, my, my words and my presence just isn't sure. um, valued, Okay, you know? And so, and, and I am telling you right now in 100% complete honesty, I would rather have the truth of like, Hey, I just don't got it in mm-hmm. me. I don't take that personally. You, you put a lot of energy out into your stream. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that because when I'm done with my live stream, I'm wiped out and you do it. 10 times more than I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you right now, my, my clear boundary is, is that I'm okay. If you're like, Hey, I just don't got it in me right now. Then I'll make a note and I'll tell, I'll talk to you when you have the time. But if you do say yes, Mm -hmm. I think, um, out of respect, Mm -hmm. I need to listen. You need to listen to me as much as I listen to you. Absolutely. Understandable. Okay. You know, absolutely. And I think, yeah, that's, that makes me, you're 100% in the right. And that makes a very valid point. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I think if we start giving each other the respect and the boundaries mm-hmm. that we both want back, mm-hmm. it's going to, it's just, it's, it's better. Yeah. Well, well, it's just another step into like our self healing and then untying, untying that, that, that knot. knot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay. yeah, no, very, very good. Um, so to continue on that article, it just says, um, healthy boundaries versus unhealthy boundaries. And it says people with solid boundaries tend to have lower levels of stress and higher self-esteem because they prioritize their well-being. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, people without boundaries may inadvertently let others take advantage of them. And it says they may lack self-confidence, a sense of purpose, or a clear identity to guide them through life. Counselor Dr. Dana Nelson writes, in work or in our personal relationships, poor boundaries lead to resentment, anger, and burnout. This is people without boundaries can easily per- be can be easily persuaded into things they don't want to do because they may be acting out of guilt or obligation rather than self love, and it says signs of healthy boundaries and it says protect yourself from getting taken advantage of, own your time, high self esteem and high respect, prioritize time for yourself. You only take time. You only take on respons- responsibilities you can handle. You don't overcommit yourself, and that's one that I think I definitely mm-hmm. do not do. And I definitely, and it says authentically say no, if you don't have the energy or capacity to do something, set limits for others without feeling bad, strong sense of identity and direction, take care of your own problems and understand that you cannot heal other people's issues for them. Mm -hmm. And then the last one says you clearly communicate your needs and wants you prioritize your self care. And then examples of unhealthy boundaries would say vulnerable to being used or taken advantage of 
Overcommitment, uh, or to overcommit your time to others and leave little time for yourself. Lower self-esteem and critical inner dialogue. Give a lot of time to other people. Feeling exhausted or burnt out by overwhelming commitments, commitments and responsibilities. Having a hard time saying no. Feel guilty for expressing boundaries. Change yourself to fit in with what di- with different people. And then it says, take on other people's problems as your own. And then you put other people's needs and wants before your own. So it's very interesting to see that. Like, It's interesting because there's there in when I was reading that list, I was like, oh, well, I, I do that now. Or I mm-hmm. used to do that. Or I do that now. Well, oh, I used to do that. And so it's very interesting to see that. Like, you know, uh, it seems like a lot of yes service. You're giving mm-hmm. people, you're, you're a yes person. Where I think if you make those boundaries, no, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Now I can. Yeah. Now I can actually work on myself kind of thing. It's been a really cool journey watching you yeah. in your, I mean, because mm-hmm. it's easier for me to watch you than to like, sometimes it's like I said, well, let me see if I can say this right. It's easier to watch somebody else's self journey instead sure. of your own. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know? it's easier to like, to see it on the outside. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, you've had an impressive an amount of self growth mm-hmm. here lately. Mm-hmm. And it's been really nice because it's, um, you seem freer. Yeah, I'm happier. Yeah. You know, and like, and that's the thing though, it's like, because before I, we're going to keep using the stream as just an example, yeah. you know, I'd have like five or six people and I was so hell bent on keeping those five or six mm-hmm. people happy that I would sacrifice my well being, I would sacrifice my mental health, I would do things that I didn't want to do, but if that's what they wanted, mm-hmm. then I would do it, I would jump through hoops. Whereas now, you know, my stream is quadrupled and, you know, I'm at 40, 50 people and I do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. You know, I do whatever I want. And, oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, I do whatever I want. And um, it's very, very freeing and liberating. And I think people gravitate towards that. that, um, that well, ab- it's that energy you're projecting. Yeah, yeah people gravitate towards that, that self-confidence. Yes. And that, that projecting of like, oh, well, this is who he is. You know, this is him as a person. Not this is, this is my, uh, my, my Play-Doh yeah. to like mold however I want. Well, yeah, because I mean, they can, I mean, the thing is, is that, I mean, I, I'm not sure about your platform, but I'm sure there's a whole lot of people out there doing that mm-hmm. cringy stuff for yeah. views. Mm-hmm. And I know like when I'm scrolling through TikTok, you can see them a mile away. Yeah. Well, it's, it's even, it's even lower than that. Like it's even just like, for example, we were watching a movie in our discord yesterday. Okay. And so we were watching a Bronx tale and one viewer who is, you know, she's funny. She's, you know, she's younger. Um, but she was saying some inappropriate things about, um, you know, a, a cute guy. And she was like, you know, it was getting to the point where I was like, oh, okay, this is enough. So I stepped in and I was like, hey, knock it off. You know, okay. I, I, I very politely said no. And then I said, we're not talking like this. And then well, she's like, you. you know, she apologized. She's like, I'm sorry, didn't do it again. And instead of like letting that go or instead of like letting her slide and continue being oh, disruptive, yeah, yeah. you know, and not setting that boundaries of what's okay and what's not okay. It would have hurt. You know, I, I would have felt, um, like I had caved and I think I would have lost a lot of, I, I would have felt personally like I had lost the respect of the stream because they're like, Oh, well he's not strong enough or confident because it's enough your to discord, say, no, right? it's my discord. Okay. Yeah. It's my, it's my universe. Mm-hmm. You know, I ultimately like I have the say. And so, it, you know, I'm the captain of the ship and mm-hmm. if, if you don't respect the captain, there's going to be a mutiny kind of thing. And so I wasn't comfortable with it. And so I, you know, stepped in and said, Hey, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. And, because in the past, mm-hmm. I think what you would have done is you would have let it slide mm-hmm. and then you would have beaten yourself mm-hmm. up over over it for a yeah. week. Oh yeah, I would have validated about, her reasoning. Oh, she's just having fun. Oh, she's just that's just her. Um, or even so, you would have beat yourself up for because you would have wanted to have yeah, stepped and in, not but, been able to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for example, another point is um, th- I didn't you didn't think of it at the time, but there was there, there's younger people in my stream and or in the, in the Discord channel, and I'm going to make it 18 plus starting Monday. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have to message a couple of people and ask them, you know, like, hey, this is just what's going to happen. I'm going to remove you from the server. No hard feelings. Whereas before, okay. I'd be like, oh my God, what if he, what if they're upset? You know, where it's like, it's just how it is. So just the Discord is going to be 18 plus? Just the Discord. Yeah, yeah. that's probably mm-hmm. best. Because, you know, the people share personal information. Mm-hmm. Nothing is, nothing is, um, like not safe for worth work. Nothing is, um, inappropriate or anything like that, but I want to, I want to continue having a mature, um, community. It's also about keeping younger people safe. Uh, keeping younger people yeah. safe. Absolutely. You know, what? it's, it's what I think what you're doing mm-hmm. is very, um, very responsible and very mm-hmm. honorable. Mm-hmm. You know, you're putting their, it's your boundary. You're not comfortable having them there. Mm-hmm. It's your boundary. Yeah. You're setting it. Mm-hmm. And it's really very, like I said, again, the whole self-love of self-esteem, mm-hmm. yeah. self-love, 
self boundaries has it's just monumental. Yeah, and I grow as you grow because you're my you know. Yeah, you know, and I definitely feel, I, I, in a in a sense, I do feel obligated to to continue growing or you know or not obligated but i i'm very comp i'm very happy to see the the steps that have been taking you know every week it's just everything gets a little bit better yeah you know every every week things get i i feel more confident i feel more you know more um engaging i feel a lot more um just happy and i think setting those boundaries and and acknowledging like you know, my self confidence, my self esteem and things like that has been really nice. Well, you're validating your presence on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. You before. Know. Yeah. We're like, you know, like when I had my long hair, I'd almost hide behind my long hair. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when I cut my long hair, I was very people pleasing. I had low self esteem and it's been very interesting to see how that's been growing. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very, very happy with everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're like I said, your self growth has been just, it's been really, yeah. As a mom, um, it's been really cool to watch, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, you're keep up the good work. Yeah, so and in, in all honesty, Robert, I know that we have a really, I think our communication not is better than it has mm -hmm. been. Yeah, and I know that we have um, ways to go. Yeah, but I'm really pleased that we are working. Yeah, on it. and I think doing these podcasts and kind of talking about more of a mental health and. Uh, you know, like more well-being, I think is helping a lot too, because I think we're understanding each other more. Yeah. And I think what I've taken from this is that it, when you, when you do talk, mm -hmm. I need to stop a lot, you know, sounding the sirens mm -hmm. and just listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and just, you know, if, if you want my opinion, just be like, so what's your opinion? Yeah. yeah. What's if your take on this? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make it more clear in the beginning. Like, Hey, I just needed a, can I just vent to you for a second? Yeah. Or like, Hey, can I get your help on something? Yeah. And setting those boundaries as to how you you like you know how to respond i think is going to make ultimately the yeah. world easier yeah so. because i'm listening now yeah. and before i wasn't listening so mm -hmm. you would say these words and they would still mm -hmm. fly right over my mm -hmm. head but i am actively listening yeah. and now it's up to me to respond properly absolutely yeah yeah so that was a really good subject thank you i really like how organically this is all just like mm -hmm. again low self esteem self love mm -hmm. setting well, they're boundaries all intertwined, you yeah know? how yeah. it's just like all leading together into this amazing self growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So kudos, sir. Well, thank you. Well, there you awesome. go. <laughs> well, do you want to tell them where to find us? I do. You can find Robert on um, Instagram as Robert Robert Pike Pike. Mm -hmm. He is on TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube as Sherbert, which is S U R E B E R T, just in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I am gray hair and tattoos across all platforms. Nice. Okay, wave. Say bye. You guys have a great week. <laughs> have a great week and we will see you next Monday. Next Monday. All right. Bye. bye.